Hey guys, in this short but highly informative presentation, you're going to learn the strategy to safely and quickly grow your savings and or your retirement account by investing in a little known uh, investment class that I'm going to refer to as like the best kept secret in real estate. And I know that this is going to sound strange, but the best kept secret in real estate is don't invest in real estate. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You heard me right. Don't invest in real estate. See, I'm going to go as far as to say this. If you're not a professional investor, you shouldn't invest at all. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you, you're, uh, you should stuff your savings into a mattress or something like that. But what I am saying is that to safely and quickly grow your savings, you shouldn't invest your money because investing involves a high degree of risk. I mean, you've no doubt heard or read investment disclaimers like this one. Investing involves a high degree of risk. The investments and services offered by us may not be suitable for all investors. Oh, well, guess what? That's exactly what it says on the Charles Schwab website. How about this one? It says, investing involves inherent risk. Our firm does not provide any guaranteed return on any investments made. That's fidelity. Maybe you've got your money with them. Here's another. There's no guarantee that any investment strategy or approach will be successful or achieve in any particular level of results. All investment products involve risk of principal loss. And that's from the Bank of New York Mellon's website, the most popular mutual fund in America. I think you guys kind of get the picture, right? So the obvious question then becomes, look, if I don't invest my money, how, how am I supposed to make it work for me? Well, here's the answer. I want you to start to think like a banker. I think that we can all agree that banks are masters of money. Perhaps that's why you see the names on banks, the names of banks on the top of some of the tallest and the nicest buildings in town. Now, here's an interesting fact about banks. Banks don't invest. <laughs> yeah, think about that for just a minute. Banks don't invest, do they? Banks don't buy real estate, stocks or gold, or silver, or oil wells, or mutual funds. Banks don't invest in cryptocurrency. They don't invest. Banks lend. Okay? Banks lend. So, here's why banks lend. Because, first of all, there's no market volatility. Right? If you're lending, you're not tied to the real estate market, or the stock market, or the cryptocurrency market. You're not tied to the volatility, the ups and downs, of those markets at all. The profits that you create as a lender are contractual. Now, what does that mean? It means that there's a legal and binding document that someone signs and says, hey, I will pay you back. And there are consequences if they don't. You also receive regular monthly payments. You see, when you lend money, when banks lend money, they don't have to wonder what their cash flow is going to be like next month or next year. They know what their cash flow is going to be like based upon the contracts that they have in their files. You can earn higher than average returns when you become a lender, and that's why banks do it. See, they don't want to just earn you know, small returns and then also risk those returns with volatility. And here's the big one. You can get collateral. Banks require collateral when they are lending money, right? Collateral is something that they can take if you, if you don't pay them back like you said you would. So as you think like a banker, you have to keep three things in mind, right? There's three... Look, you want to think like a banker. And I'm sharing this with you for a reason because I've identified three powerful market conditions that have created an opportunity for you and me to actually profit like bankers, okay? The first of these three market conditions involves a recent change in the law, which opens the door of a 100-year-old real estate investing sub-market that very few people even know exists. And because so few people know it exists, there's not very much competition in this lucrative investment niche. The second of these market forces is social. There's a mindset shift taking place in our country. People are waking up to the reality that the financial strategies that work for their parents and their grandparents don't necessarily work in today's environment. 
people are sick and tired of the volatility and the high risk associated with stocks. And they realize that the pathetic interest rates paid by banks doesn't cut it, doesn't even keep up with inflation. And so people are actively entering the world of investing. And by far, the fastest growing investment category is real estate and the submarkets that fall under real estate, like landlording, flipping, mortgage note investing, and so forth. The third of these market forces is tech, is technology and artificial intelligence, AI, right? We've all heard of AI. Well, technology is driving us into an era that I like to call the age of collaboration. Thanks to technology, people can collaborate on projects anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world for that matter. And we see this happening all around us. I mean, think about Uber, Amazon, DoorDash, these billion dollar companies were not built the old school way. Uber didn't go out and buy 10,000 taxi cabs and then hire 10,000 employees to drive them. They used technology to collaborate with people that already have cars, ordinary working people, hardworking people, right? DoorDash doesn't own a single delivery vehicle, but yet they earned $8.6 billion in delivery fees. Hello, they do it by collaborating with other people. That's why I call this the age of collaboration. And let me tell you something, guys, we are in the age of collaboration right now. It's here. It doesn't matter what your job or profession may be. Each of us needs to decide to get on board the collaboration train or get left behind. And although you and I are not banks, this convergence of those three market forces has opened a door of opportunity for us to perform a very profitable banking function. You see, we can use our savings, our retirement, or whatever to become something called a private lender. And over the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to show you how you can capitalize on this trend. Whether you're a busy professional, a single mom, or even a retired person, you can become a private lender and you can safely earn high returns while you collect passive income every single month. And here's how you're gonna do it. As I said a few minutes ago, the best kept secret in real estate is don't invest in real estate, and here's why. It's much smarter, much safer, and much more profitable to put your money into real estate loan. That's what I'm talking about here. You see, as a private lender, you don't have to deal with any market volatility. Because just like the banks, you're not in the market. You're going to profit from a contract. People are going to sign a contract saying, hey, I owe you money and I agree to pay you back with interest on the first of the month or whatever you put in your contract. And if I don't pay you, I'm going to pay you a late charge if I, if I don't pay you on time. And if I don't pay you at all, you can take my thing away from me, my car, my house, my whatever it is you pledge, they pledge as collateral. That's huge. You're going to have this passive income that comes in every single month. You don't have to go out and go to work for this money. It's just going to show up in your bank account or in your mailbox. And you don't have to deal with any properties because as a private lender, you don't own the real estate. You're not a landlord. You're not a property flipper. You're a bank to those people. So you don't deal with tenants. You're going to literally profit from professional investors skills and expertise without you becoming a professional investor. Let them invest. That's why banks don't invest because investing is too risky, right? You don't need to become an expert in real estate. You don't need to become an expert property flipper. You don't need to become an expert landlord, yet you can profit from real estate flips, from landlording and from other real estate and non-real estate related activities because you are the money person involved in that. So your lifestyle is not interrupted. Nothing's gonna cut into your lifestyle. So once I discovered private lending, I realized that I'd been sitting on the wrong side of the financial table for almost my entire adult life. And right now you may be sitting on the wrong side of the table. And if so, it's not your fault, okay? Most of us have been taught about money by people that frankly didn't have very much of it, right? I mean, think about it. Were you mentored by a millionaire? I sure wasn't. However, I've learned some things and over the last 10 years, I've become a self-made millionaire and I did it by changing seats at the financial table. And you can do it too. 
Private lending allows anyone to sit in the banker's chair. And so let me show you a couple of case studies that's going to illustrate exactly how this works, okay? One of the primary benefits of being a private lender is that we get to collaborate with other professionals that have skills that we don't have. We get to profit from their expertise and their skills and their labor and their business connections by funding their project. And here's an example of one that I did recently. As you can see, this is a cute little house. An investor called me from Morro Bay, California. Now, Morro Bay is up by San Francisco, right? She called me and said, I picked up this property at a foreclosure auction for $700,000. I said, good. That seems like a pretty good price for that house in that town. And she said, what I want to do is I want to take that garage that's there on the left, and I want to tear that down, and I want to build a, build a two-story house right there. And so I was intrigued. I said, that sounds very interesting. She said, but here's the problem that I have. She said, I used almost all my money to buy this place. I've only got $200,000 left, but it's going to cost me $600,000 to build that house. And so I said, well, I'll tell you what. I will lend you money, the $400,000 that you need in order to build that house. And so here's what we did. Okay. I did a private loan for her for $400,000. She and her husband then went on to do this. They built this house. As you can see, it's a cute house, right? And it's got two stories. And by the way, I should tell you this too. The reason that this house has two stories is because from the second story and that balcony right there in the front, this home has some of the most breathtaking ocean views that you can get in Morro Bay, California. You can sit on that balcony and watch awesome, breathtaking sunsets over the Pacific Ocean. That gave this property additional value. The ocean views made this house appraised for $1.5 million. And that's just the one on the left, not even the one on the right that she bought for $700,000. So I looked at this and I thought, look, how can I go wrong? I can lend $400,000 because I put a lien on the whole darn thing, right? So if I didn't get my money back, worst case scenario is I would have got the house in the before condition, the $700,000 house. I would have picked it up for $400,000 if she and her husband failed to pay me. Now, that in and of itself would not have been a bad deal. But if they failed to pay me after building that house, I would pick up both those properties for $400,000. So I'm in a very safe position, aren't I? That's the point. But here's the bigger point. While they were building this house, I was doing other things. My life was going on. As a matter of fact, while they were building this house, I took three vacations. It took them nine months to build this house. I took three vacations. I went to Alaska, I went to Hawaii, and I went to Mexico on vacation. Three different times, three different vacations. Okay. And while I was traveling and spending my life doing the things that I enjoy doing, I earned $42,000 for funding their deal. I made $42,000 on their project without ever visiting it, without swinging a hammer, without touching anything to do with it. I literally just made an investment, if you want to call it that, in their project. I did a loan to those people and they did all the work and I profited from their skills, their business connections, and their effort. How's that? Here's another deal that I profited from. A couple of guys in Florida reached out to me and said, hey, we want to buy this little house right here in Florida. It's $150,000. We've only got hundred grand, but we'd like to buy it. And I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll loan you guys the $50,000 if you're short, okay? And I'll loan it to you for five years. And here's what I want from you. I want you guys to pay me 9% interest for using my money for the next five years. Okay? And they said, deal. So I loaned them the $50,000. And over the next five years, they paid me $4,500 a year. So a total of $22,500 that I earned from that little house. And I never had to deal with that house at all. I never touched it. When I was in Florida about... Two years ago, I decided to just drive past it because why not, right? I was making money from that house. I started, drove past it. And I said, huh, cute little house. 
But that's my full extent of what I did with this house. And I have since been paid off. They've given me back my $50,000. So I made $22,500 from that little house without lifting a finger other than to pay, to loan these guys 50 grand. And now I got my money back. Now, if they hadn't given me back my money, then I would have owned that house right there for $50,000. Because when you're the lender, you either get your money or you get the collateral. That's the way it works. Okay. So they paid me back. So I got my money and that's good. As a matter of fact, it literally at the time of the recording of this, of this uh, recording here, I was literally paid eight days ago. So just so you guys know, that's when I got my $50,000 back. So this is a powerful, powerful way to do business. Okay. Now, the last case study that I'm going to show you here is one where I was the borrower. I was the investor. I bought the mortgage on that house right there in Georgia. Okay. The bank offered the mortgage for sale. I wanted to buy it and I needed $47,500 to buy that mortgage. Now I didn't have $47,500 liquid at the time. And so what I did is I reached out to a guy that I knew had $47,500 in his retirement account. And I said, dude, I'd like to borrow $47,500 from you. And I'm buying the mortgage on that house. And I will give you the mortgage and that house as your collateral if you will loan me $47,500. I'll give him the mortgage and the house as collateral. So he's got double collateral. Hello. So I said, I'll pay you 8% interest to use your money for 10 years. And he said, that's a deal. The reason that he said that is because he's only in his 30s. It's in his retirement account. He can't even touch it until he's 60 years old. So for the next 10 years, he's going to be making 8% on that money. Why wouldn't he do that? No volatility, right? He's going to get the payments coming in every single month like clockwork. Why wouldn't he do that? So I purchased the mortgage on that little house. And I agreed to pay him 8%, which came out to $3,800 a year for the next 10 years. That means all total, I'm going to pay him $38,000 to use his money. You see that? So at the end of 10 years, his retirement account is going to go from $47,500 to $85,500. Now think about that for a minute. His retirement account is going to grow to $85,500 without him personally adding another nickel. Now, obviously, I'm assuming he's still adding money into his retirement account, but this money here is growing without his efforts. Guys, did he just sweeten his retirement years, make his golden years a lot more golden by doing this? You doggone right he did, okay? But now, remember I said earlier, we want to think like a banker. So here's what I want to ask you a question. If a banker made $3,800 a year by lending money to someone, would, would they let that $3,800 sit in the vault? Or what would they do with that $3,800? I think you all know. They're going to lend that out. So let me show you something here. I'm going to show you how compound interest works, okay? Compounding works this way. Albert Einstein is reputed to have said, the most powerful force in the universe is compounded interest. I don't know if he said it or not, but if he did, he's, he was a genius, okay? Because let me show you something here. There's a strategy that I teach. It's called money in motion, okay? And it's the foundation of extreme wealth building. So let me show you how that works. Check this out. Let's go back to our same example here. My software engineer that loaned me $47,500. Now I'm going to pay him $3,800 to use his money in the first year, right? That's just, and I'm, that's the first year only. So that means in year two, he's gonna have 3,800 bucks sitting on, on the shelf. He can loan that money out at 8% and he'll earn $304 on that money. You see that? So now he's earning 3,800 on the 47 and he earns 304 on the 3,800. So at the end of the year, year two, He's going to have $4,104 that he can lend out in year three. So in year three, he loans out $4,100. He makes $328. So at the end of year three, he's got $4,400 he can lend. You see where this is going, right? So he lends out $4,400, $355 uh, that he'll make that year from the $4,400. So let's just fast forward to 10 years out, right? 
So let's say 10 years out, he decides he's going to cash in all his chips. All right. Let's see how he would be doing at that point. 10 years out, he cashes in all his chips. And guess what? He's got $94,953 in loans principal that is owed to him. Plus, during that 10 years, he's already collected $55,000, $55,000 in interest. So his retirement account at the end of 10 years is not $85,500 like we said earlier from doing one deal. His retirement account, by using the money in motion strategy, his retirement account has $150,000 and almost double. By using the money in motion strategy, how powerful is that? You see why I'm saying that you should be, you should consider doing some private lending. Absolutely, positively. This little example here shows how this guy can literally increase his retirement account by 316% in only 10 years and not have to invest another dime of his own money to accomplish that. All he's got to do is once a year, once a year, loan somebody some money. That's all he's got to do. Wow. Wow. Okay. Now, Perhaps you can understand why I recommend that you learn to think like a banker. Hello, think like a banker. See, banks don't invest. Banks lend. Because when you lend, profits are not tied to the market. Your profits are generated by a legal and binding contract that is secured by valuable real estate. And when you implement the money in motion strategy, you experience extreme wealth building. And best of all, anybody can do this. Anybody can become a private lender. You can start with 500 bucks and become a private lender. So are you ready? Are you ready to change your life? Change your future. Start to create real wealth for yourself. And then teach this to your family so they can start to do the same thing. Are you ready for that? If so, I'm going to suggest that you reach out to me. Okay? Reach out to me. Around this video, there's... Uh, there's links that you can click on to fill out an information form that will reach, that will come to me and I will reach out to you, right? On the information form, just kind of tell me what it is you'd like to get done. Tell me when you're available and we can talk. I'll give you a ring, okay? And we can talk. So there you go, guys. I hope you guys found this enlightening. I call this the best kept secret in real estate, but now the secret is out in your life. So God bless you. Go and do this. This is a very, very good thing.